Hello, everybody. It's so nice to see everybody today and get back to learning a new Bible story. And we are going to start out with prayer. So let's close our eyes, close our mouth, be respectful, keep your heart wide open because we're going to talk to God. And so let's pray right now, okay? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for a beautiful, beautiful day. We thank you for the summer and the different changes of seasons that you give us. We thank you for that. We just pray that you'll be with every boy and girl who's watching and their family members. We pray that you'll be with Josh in the Army, Sergeant Josh now, and we just pray that you will protect him, keep him safe. We pray that you'll be with Levi and his arm, that it would heal up quickly. And different people in our church who may not be feeling well or who may be watching this who may not be feeling well, we just pray that you'll be right there with them as we know you will be. And we just pray that you'll be with our country right now and help us all to have peace in our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this story is not in the Old Testament, so it's in the what? I mean, it's not in the New Testament, so it's in, I gave you the answer. So it's in the what? I have a little something to say. One of the persons on my team broke their thumb. Broke their thumb? That would be hard, wouldn't it? Well, here, because you said Old Testament. There you go. You might want to sit in a chair, okay? And so this is in the book of Job, and it looks like the word job. J-O-B, but it's actually Job. And remember how I said a lot of times the, the books that we've been looking at have been little short books. This one's a little bit longer. You can't sit and read it like a bedtime story. It's a little bit longer, but it's a very cool story. And we're going to start out and talk about Job. Job was a very, very rich man. He had ten children, and he had, let's see how many things he had. He had 7,000 sheep. That's a lot of sheep, isn't it? He had 3,000 camels. He had 500 oxen, or ox, they're kind of like cows, and 500 donkeys. He not only had that, but he had a lot of land, he had a lot of riches, and he had lots and lots of servants. And he was a good guy. He loved the Lord, he served the Lord. And one thing that I think is kind of neat that the Bible says is that he prayed for his children all the time. And that's a sign of a good mom and dad, isn't it? That pray for their children. And he prayed for them because, and gave sacrifices for them because, in case they had sinned. And I think that's a really good mom or dad, isn't it? That prays for their kids. And so Job was a really rich man, and he had all these things. He had seven sons and three daughters, which we know seven plus three equals what? I think this kid over here is going to say it. Ten. ten. Right, you said it. <laughs> ten. He had ten children, and he prayed for them all the time. But you know what? There was something going on that Job didn't know about. And what it was was Satan came to God. And Satan was in the presence of God, which to me is kind of strange, but that's what the Bible says, and I believe the Bible. And God said to Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? There is nobody on earth that is as good as him, and so he can carefully turn away evil and do right. But you know what the Bible says Satan is? Satan is the accuser of the saints. That means Satan has no greater joy than to drag down a Christian that believes in God. That's what he loves to do. He doesn't have to bother with the people who don't believe in him. They already don't. They already are sinning. He doesn't care. But if he can cause a Christian to be discouraged and to sin, Satan is very happy with that. And Satan said to God, no wonder he's so safe, so faithful. He has every reason to be faithful. You give him a lot of things. He's very rich. He's got a lot of kids. He's got a lot of herds of all these animals. Sure, he's going to praise you. But God said to him, try him and see. Do anything you wish to Job, only you cannot hurt him. So Satan probably thought, I'm going to get him. He will curse God. I know he will. So 
Job was at his house one day, and along came one of his servants. And his servant said, Master, we were out plowing, and some enemies of ours, called the Sabians, came and took all of our, let's see, what was it that he took? The oxen. They stole all the oxen, and they killed all the other servants, and I'm the only one that got away. The servant was not hardly even finished talking when all of a sudden another guy comes in and says, Job, you're not going to believe what happened. Lightning came from the sky and struck all the sheep and the servants and killed them dead. I'm the only one who escaped. And then another guy came in and said, Job, you're not going to believe this. The Chaldeans made a raid upon us and stole all our camels. They took the animals and they killed all the servants who were with them. I bet Job thought, oh no. But there was something really bad that was even going to happen more. If this weren't enough, another servant came in with a worst report of all and said, Job, you're not going to believe what happened. There was a great wind, and your, all your kids were over having a dinner at their oldest brother's house. You know how families do have get-togethers. And this great big wind came, probably kind of like a tornado, tore down the house, and killed everybody. And so, poor Job, on one day he lost his children, his servants, all his flocks, and all his herds of animals, everything that he owned, and he tore his clothes. Remember how we talked about in the Bible a lot of times when people were very, very upset and mourning, they would rip their clothes. He tore his clothes and he fell on the ground, but you know what? He never said nothing bad against God. He said, the Lord gave them all to me, and so the Lord took them away, and I will bless his name. I bet that shocked Satan. He thought, I wanted this guy to curse God. I wanted this guy to shake his fist and say, God, why did you do this to me? But he didn't. He blessed God. And Satan hardly knew how to react. He accused Job. He, was, he accused Job to the Lord, didn't he? But Job has not turned away from you yet because you know why, God? You didn't touch his body. You didn't allow me to do anything to his body. I bet if I would make his body sick, he would curse you. And God said, you can try and find out, but here's what I want you to do. Satan, you're not allowed to kill him. So Satan thought, good now. You know, Satan's a sneaky old guy. He thought, now I can do what I want. So all of a sudden, Job was covered from head to toe with great big infected boils. And I bet he was very, very sore. Yes? So he got hurt by Satan? Satan? Did he die? No, because God said you can't take his life. And so God allowed Satan. God didn't punish him and cause him to get boils. But God allowed Satan to do that. We don't know why. But, but, but Satan's God's enemy. I know, Satan is all our enemy, isn't he? And Satan right now... So he, so he just does stuff so then he can make the person who loves God that so much to hate him? That's what he wants, but we don't have to, do we? No. No, we don't have to. And so here was poor Job covered with head to toe with these great big infected sore boils. He couldn't even hardly roll around on his bed. It just hurt him so bad. And you know what his wife said? You know, you're in such pain. Why don't you just curse God, God and why don't you just die? Can you imagine if somebody so said that Satan to you? did Satan do something to his wife? No, it doesn't say he did anything to his wife. Okay. But she, she was discouraged. She listened to Satan, I think, and whispering in her ear. She was really, because he, she, he, he, she said really mean things to him. Well, she okay, said. Okay, no one, whoever is it, whoever um, knows God a lot and who's baptized, even though they, even if they don't not and have God in their heart, they would not listen to Satan. We shouldn't listen to Satan, should we? Satan, in fact, there's a verse I was going to tell you about. In John 10.10, 10, it says, Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He does nothing good, nothing good. He wants us all to be depressed, 
He wants us to be sad. He is wants Satan, us to be in pain. Satan is does. Satan still alive? Satan is still alive. I'm sorry to say he is alive. There's a book called Satan is Alive and Well on the Planet Earth. And all you have to do is watch the news, don't you, to know that Satan is alive. But he's not going to be forever. God wins, doesn't he? God yeah, certainly God, wins. Satan doesn't have any powers against God. God can control him and can stop him from killing people. I know, and it's hard to understand. I'm a grandma, and I can't understand why God allows certain things to happen and certain things not to happen. We don't know. We just have to trust God, don't we? God yeah. also can control Satan, and so he'll let him do that, but always he can stop him from doing God's that. In and control. he can pull him up to heaven, he pull him so. back to him, and then tell him, don't do that to him. He's one of my person who praises me. Well, that's what he said to Job. He said, you cannot kill him. And then, all of a sudden, he had three so-called friends come and visit him. And you know what? Chapter after chapter in the book of Job, these friends say, you must have did something awful. Did you he, must be a real bad sinner. Did he ever, did he die, though? Well, eventually he died, but not for a long time yet. So his friends said, you know, why don't you just curse God? You must have been such a bad person. But all the time, Job answers and said, no, I love God. I honor God. So maybe Satan was whispering into those guys' ears, and they're saying something really mean. And so they you were. never want to listen to that. You never want to listen to Satan. We want. That's why it's so good to read the Bible and learn the Bible. And, and then says, we're stronger against Satan, aren't we? And this things on the wall say, be strong in the Lord. It does say, be strong in the Lord. Right here we have some signs that say that. Well, let's and get back to our story. Good. So that will teach you to never listen to Satan. Right, we shouldn't listen. And it, the best way to not listen to Satan is to know your Bible. Because when you know God's Word, then you can tell what's from Satan, what's from God. Well, all of a sudden, his friends were just yakking at him and telling him you should curse God. But guess what came from heaven? A whirlwind came, and God spoke out loud. Remember how I said sometimes in the Bible God speaks out loud? Which I think mm -hmm. is so cool. I would love that. God would speak out loud. If I and could even hear him, that would be so cool. I know, it would be. Then and I would see him. I know. How cool that would be. But he, God's always around you. He Even sure the is. angels are flying around us right I know now. it. Right here there's angels flying around. and they, I don't think they can see them on the camera either. But there is. God said there's angels around us and God is protecting us. Well, let's listen. The voice of God came in a whirlwind. And he said, Joe, were you there when the world was formed? Do you know how to measure the world? Do you know that what came <clears throat> when light and darkness came? Did you put the stars in the sky? And Job was just awestruck. He thought it was awesome. With the magnificent of, magnificence of God. He could not understand his suffering, but he realized that it's just like many of the mysteries of the universe when God holds a key. And he said, I must wait in peace. And so this is what God did for him. Let's listen to this. This is really cool. Okay. He had 7,000 sheep. So did it, God give him more sheep? Just wait and see. That's the cool part. He doubled it. He had 10 more children. Uh, God uh, caused him to have 10 more children. Instead of 7,000 sheep, he got 14,000 sheep. That's a lot. That is a lot of sheep. Instead of 3,000 camels, he got 6,000 camels. Instead of a thousand, instead of five hundred ox, which is kind of like cows, he got a thousand, and instead of five hundred donkeys, he got a thousand. So, so God doubled I guess it. God loves him so much, God. and he might, and the person who that we're speaking about right now must have loved him a lot. He did. He praised God, and, and you know what? I know Satan does not love little God. Yeah. He just, he just um, has a black heart. And he thinks that he doesn't want anybody to be baptized. He doesn't want anybody to be happy and love the Lord, does he? But because John, in the book of John 8.44, says that Satan is the father of all lies. That, mean whenever, that means whenever there's a lie, guess who's the one who started it? Satan. 
And I think when we read this, so many times, ever since I've been a little girl, like you guys, I always would hear, this is about the story of the patience of Job. What was his name? Let's see if you can, what was his name? John. Not Jahan. Almost like, looks like Job, but his name is Job. 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 It's the page. It, <coughs> whoops, let's all sit in chairs. The patience of Job, but you know what? I don't think it's about the patience of Job. I think it's about the faithfulness of Job. Job wasn't especially patient. He was especially faithful. He praised God and loved God no matter what. Even when all this bad stuff happened, he didn't just give up and say, I'm done, I'm sick of all this. Nope, he was very patiently faithful. So I don't think it's just about being patient, because you can be patient if you have to wait in line, hmm, what time is it at the grocery store, or something like that. It isn't just about being patient. He was very, very faithful. And, you know, every story in the Bible isn't just a story. It's always in there to teach us something. One thing that it teaches, I think the main thing, is that God is in control. God is in control of everything around us. Even though sometimes we might think, well, yeah, but I did this and I did this, so I'm in control. No, God allowed you to do that. But God is in control. God's always right. He's always right, and he's always right there with and us, and he's always in is, control. My verse is 2 Timothy 3.16. All scriptures is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and for righteous, uh, training in righteousness. That was good. Was that your soccer verse? Yes. She learned her soccer verse. That's it. And a, so it's talking about the scriptures that God wrote. Right. Um, right. Wrote. It's true. It's not some made-up story. Oh, yeah, I don't think that's true. Trust me, it's true. Everybody on my team also knows it, even though they don't. Even if they don't know it, they're they're, just they're all learning. Trying really hard. Well, that's good. It's and good to learn Bible voices. The Bible says it so hard that it's so easy. You just it's so, the way to be captain is just always to help out your team. Very good. Whenever She's a good team player, coach, aren't you? Whenever the coach says, "Time to put the balls away." You just don't kick it or pass it around. You obey, don't you? Because mm -hmm. the Bible says to obey. I always am the person who puts my ball in the bag and then it's done. Everybody else runs up and then puts it in the back. Good the only job. thing I had trouble with this week, there were, there were two boys on my team who were passing the ball back and forth during the Well, I everybody's got to kind of learn to obey, and you can be a good example. But I want to talk about the things in the story that God teaches us. First of all, God is in control. And second of all, this is something very, very important. That sometimes bad things happen to good people, people who love the Lord, if nothing bad ever happened, we live in a fallen world, don't we? A sinful world. And if nothing bad ever happened to Christians, guess what? There'd be Christians like now, 2,000 years old, still walking around, never get sick, never have anything happen to them. But because we live in a sinful world, things happen. Why don't we all sit down, okay? Sit in the chair. And so, that's what we have to remember, just a minute, that bad things can happen to good people. And it doesn't mean that God is punishing you. He wasn't punishing Job. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. But sometimes because we live in a fallen world and we live in a sinful world that has diseases and things, that's just the way it is. But God does promise that even when it happens to you, He is always what? Grateful. He's always with you. We can be grateful, but God is always with you, yes. Also... Even though you think that you're perfect, God's the only one perfect. Right. And so even think you think you do everything perfect, you even sometimes say wrong things that you didn't mean to say. Right. We all do that, don't we? We and say like, wrong things. This morning, I hit my head on the wall because my brother pulled my foot. Oh, no. You're okay, though? Yes. Oh, I'm glad you're okay. So we have to remember that sometimes... Bad things can happen, things can be, people can be sick, people can get cancer, 
People can be born with problems. That's just the way it is. God can take something that Satan causes for bad, just like in the story of Job. God can take something that Satan wants to go bad, and he can flip it over and turn it to good. And a verse about that is in Genesis 50, 20, and that's when we talked about Joseph. Remember when we talked about Joseph that got hauled down to Egypt? His brothers meant it for bad, but God turned it into good because God made it a way that he could save his whole nation. And that's what happens. When we give it to God, God can take something bad and turn it to good. And another thing to remember about this story is we can praise God even when things go wrong. Now, you know one thing I was thinking about? One, sometimes people might think, well, if I'm a Christian, I've asked the Lord Jesus into my heart, and I love the Lord, then nothing bad is ever going to happen to me. I'm always going to be rich. I'm always going to be healthy. I'm going to have everything I ever wanted. Nothing bad is going to ever happen to me. How could we as Christians ever be sympathetic and have a tender heart towards somebody who's going through something if we have never went through it? Now, I know I've talked to you guys a lot before about my daughter, Mary, who was born with a lot of health problems. She, she was quite handicapped. She couldn't eat. She couldn't breathe on her own. She had to have a hole here called a trach. She never ate. She lived to be 25 years old and never ate a bite of food in her life. She had to be fed through a tube in her tummy. She couldn't walk. She couldn't talk. But you know what? Even in her little way, she was a good testimony to God because we loved her just the way she was. But you know what? After she died, I had a, a friend who lost her daughter. I can say, I know what it's like because I lost my daughter. And if, say you have a, um, say your, your dog died and your friend at school or your neighbor, their dog died, you can go up to him and you can say, you know what? I know what it's like because my dog died too. We can be sympathetic and have a tender heart to other people who are going through things because we've gone through them too. If God just made it so we never had to go through anything, we would say, I don't know what it's like to have a child die or I don't know what it's like to have my pet die or, or my grandma or grandpa die because I've never went through it. I never have nothing bad happen. That's not the way it is, is it? God lets us help other people through things that we've went through. Yes? Um, even, like, my, um, my Bradford, my cat, um, my Bradford and, uh, um, Bradford and Elijah. Elijah was the first, um, cat in my Your cat family. was named Elijah? Yeah, my, oh, that's it, I had twin cats. Oh. And so Elijah died first during when I was in preschool. And I was so bummed afterwards when I got back from preschool because they picked me up and told me the news and I was That's so hard, isn't it? It's hard to lose a pet. And then I lost my Bradford like a, a, um, two years later. It's hard, but you know what? Now if you had a friend at school who their cat passed away, you can say, I know what it's like because my cat died. And I know, I know God was they, with me and helped me through it. That's a good way. In my school, I don't know who has a cat. Well, who knows? Dog. Somebody might come up to you and say sometime during the year, my cat died. You could say, I know how you feel because my cat died too. And that's why I think God allows things to happen to Christians so we can understand the suffering that other people are having. God never promised us, you know what? Once you get saved and you love me and if you live for me, you're never going to have anything happen to you. God never says that in the Bible. He just gives us one great promise, which is even better. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. And when God says never, he means never, doesn't he? He doesn't mean sometimes, well, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I'm busy on Wednesday. No, nope. never forsake you means he will never, never leave us. And I think those are really good things because remember... The Bible isn't just a bunch of old, goofy stories that we can't learn from. Because I've heard people say that. You can't learn from that. It's just old stories. You know what? Every single story and things that happened in the Bible was written by God. It's true. And you can always, always learn from them. All the time. Yes? 
God's in your heart. God can hear you saying that. God didn't you no, God did not. It's all fake in the Bible. God did not actually write it. He actually read it in his own hand. That's what some right, that's what some people he used people. Sometimes like Paul wrote a lot of the Bible and different different Moses wrote some of the Bible, but God told them what to write. And it's true. And I always think, if you can't believe God, you couldn't believe anybody. I'm going to put my trust in God. I believe him 100%. And I hope you do too. I hope you have the Lord Jesus in your heart. And if you don't, all you have to do is ask him into your heart. Because, and he will never leave you or forsake you ever, ever, ever. And then the great ending of it is you get to go to heaven when we die. Nothing better than that is. You don't want. You always want to go to heaven, not to a different place. Right. We want to go to heaven and be with the Lord, and and see our, not only our friends and family who were Christians and went before us. Your grandma and grandpa. Your grandma and grandpa, and what will be so cool, is to actually see Jesus. Can you imagine looking in Jesus' face, and bowing down before Him and saying, "Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for us." How cool is that going to be? And you know what? There's a verse in the Bible that says, you will know people in heaven. Do you think you'll know Job? You could go up to Job and say, Job, I learned all about you in junior church. I know your whole story, and it was a cool story. How yeah, cool would that be to go see Job in so, heaven? Sometimes God always, God always knows what you're doing. Even, even so, God's always with you. So if you even get in trouble, you'll, he'll be... He'll be with you and help you think of something to say back to them. Right. Like, Helps you not to sin. God will give you the strength not to sin. Even when Jesus, or even when Satan tempts you, Jesus will help you to get through it, won't he? He'll say, like, he'll whisper in the other ear when Satan's whispering, Hey, you, you could say a lie. And then God will be like, don't do that. Right. It's, that's me. The Holy Spirit you will tell us. God's side. You, you have you, God in your heart. You got saved. Right. I think you should teach this class. You think you could? I think you could. Probably. <laughs> I think you could too. Okay, we're going to close in prayer. Just stay seated till we're done, okay? We're going to close in prayer, but I want you to remember, oh, I keep forgetting to say this every week. Are you learning your 12 disciples and the extra guy? No. If you're not, like... who is the extra guy? If you can name the extra guy, I'm going to throw you a piece of cake. The extra guy, when Judas left the group, and they voted to get a new Matthew. disciple. Matthew was one of them, but the extra one. Start, it almost sounds like Matthew. Ma. Ma. No, Matthias. Matthias. Since you had Matthew and it was kind of like Matthias, I'll give you one. <laughs> okay. And so remember that. And also remember, I'm having lots of time to plan such a big party for us. Remember, we're going I to have, helped take I know it. She's giving me ideas, and we're going to have a good party when we all can come back together. The what? Cream. She thinks we're going to have ice cream. Didn't you tell me to have milkshakes one time? I don't know. We'll see. But we'll see what how it works out. Cookies. Maybe cookies? Um, you don't have cookies. Marshmallows. Marshmallows? I don't know. We're just going to have to see. But we'll have an extra good welcome back party when we all come so back. So we're not okay? going to learn anything. I don't. Oh, we'll have a lesson, but we can we can squeeze in a party then too. I know we can. Okay, let's close in prayer. Everybody, sit still. And eyes closed, mouth closed. Sit. Just sit still. Heart wide open, because we're going to talk to God, and so we need to be very respectful, because we're going to the throne of God, the God who created the universe, the God who's in the Bible, who created you. Look at your hands. God created you. We need to be very reverent when we talk to God. That doesn't mean we don't we can't talk to him like a friend. He wants us to talk to him like a friend. But we still need to be respectful, don't we? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this good story in the Bible about Job and how you teach us to always praise you no matter what, even during bad times, which we all will have. We can still praise you and honor you. And we thank you for always being there and being our Heavenly Father, who loves us so much, we pray that you'll just help us all to have a good week this week, to be safe, to every single day remember you and remember that we are your children. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks. See you later.